<laughs> hey, so thanks everyone for for coming along. Um, I'm going to basically defer straight over to Mikey for an update on on the DSE Alpha, and we can go from and then head over to Jody and and see what what's going on there with the NX tools. So yeah, Mikey, heading it over to you, mate. Yeah. Uh, so the engineering team, uh, Steve included, uh, put out a new release of the DSC V3 Alpha. So Alpha 2 dropped on the 5th. Uh, and I'm putting the change log in <clears throat> to chat now. So it's got all of the details uh, for everything that went on. But probably uh, the three biggest things that folks will care about and what I keep in mind uh, going forward is uh, the team implemented the depends on functionality for the configuration documents, which means it's not just a property anymore. It's actually a thing that works, uh, which is good. Um, uh, and it's no longer a thing that you specify as a property of uh, a resource uh, instance itself. Like you don't, it's not defined that way. It's defined in the uh, configuration document uh, alongside the rest of the metadata for that instance. Um, so that's a neat change uh, and glad that that got in. The second thing, um, and Steve may want to speak to this a little bit more, is there's a new, I guess, verb would be the way to think about it for uh, DSCV3, which is export. So you can define a configuration <clears throat> that has uh, empty instances of particular resources and say, I want all of the instances of that resource, I want to make a config that includes all of those instances for each of these resources I've listed and output a new configuration document that captures their current state. So a good example of when you might do this is you're looking at an existing web server. You said, this one I know is good. I want to capture all the stuff that we have around our web configs in here, uh, the app pools, um, all that stuff. And I just want to turn that into a configuration document. Maybe I want to replicate it somewhere. Maybe I want to use that as the baseline for how we're going to go forward intentionally configuring this now that we know we've got something working. Um, but you can do that. You can also do single resource exports, which have the same effect, but for a single uh, resource type instead of uh, a collection. No, that's right. Uh, the one thing I want to call out, um... So, so just to be clear, like, you know, we have get set test and now export is an additional operation you can do. It does require the resource to implement this. And what we don't have yet is support for PowerShell classes. Um, that is in the queue. Um, so right now, if you want to participate, um, your resource has to be a command line based resource. Now, with that said, technically you could write a PowerShell script uh, that supports export. Uh, and you can do it as a class or whatever. It just isn't the normal DCV2 model, um, as long as you can craft the command line. And, and if you look at some of our tests that we have checked into the repo, that's kind of how we do some of our testing is that we have like some test uh, resources written in PowerShell script um, that are not script-based resources and they're not class-based resources. They're literally just PowerShell scripts that are inside the manifest. And then, by the way, I'm not saying this is a best practice. I'm just saying that's an easy way for us <laughs> to have like a test resource that we can use to validate some of this stuff. Um, so hopefully over time we'll have more resources that support export and then now you could hypothetically, you know, you configure a server and as long as there's resources behind all the configuration, you can just say, give me everything because I've manually crafted this the way I want it to be. I want to take that configuration out of this one. I'm going to apply it to thousands of other systems, right? So that's kind of like the goal that we want to get to. Yep. Uh, and alongside that, um, because under the hood, the implementation is more or less the same. Um, there's now a dash dash all flag for DSC resource get. Uh, so you can return every instance of a particular resource type. Uh, this is good for two things. The first is just when you're looking at a server locally and you just, I want to see what the uh, the settings are for um, picking a random example, uh, like your SQL databases, what databases are actually configured and how. Right. Um, and then the other thing that that is good for is integrating tools <clears throat> can make intelligent decisions. Uh, so there are some resources that have to be implemented so that they hit an API and then they filter the responses to give you the instance you care about. For those, it can be more performant to get that whole 
list of all the instances uh, right up front and then just pick the one that, that it's interacting with for test or set later. Um, so integrating tools can make those intelligent decisions going forward too. Um, other things, uh, probably less important, uh, but worth knowing, you can now control C uh, DSC run and it'll uh, respond to that and uh, cancel itself. Um, so that's good. Uh, and then the you can now specify uh, an alternate path to look for command-based DSC resources with the DSC resource path environment variable. That's good. Uh, and then there was some updates to the uh, schemas so that when you're authoring in VS Code, you'll get uh, improved IntelliSense validation. Um, and shortly, they'll link directly to the live docs uh, as soon as I finish that PR and get that up. But those changes are independent of the uh, the DSC pieces. You don't have to wait for another release to take advantage of updated schemas. Uh, and actually, that brings up a good point um, to set expectations. Like during the alpha phase, uh, this is specifically before. So beta will come when we're kind of like feature complete and things are more grounded and we won't have as many breaking changes. But during the alpha, uh, you should just expect that we're going to have breaking changes based on feedback, right? Feedback from partners, feedback from ourselves, feedback from customers, especially going back to schema. There are going to be some schema changes coming in the next alpha because we've learned from things and say, oh, this is actually a better way of doing it versus like, um, you know, hypothetically, we thought this was good, but in practice, actually, we started using the stuff like didn't work out as well as we thought. So just expect that. And, you know, that's just part of participating in the alpha. Are you, are you guys looking for early feedback from the community on, on this stuff? Oh, absolutely. That's why we made cool. it public. <laughs> Excellent. And so where where is anyone if, if people want to go and have a look at it, where what's the best place to go and have a look and then we'll get started and is it Mikey Stocks? It's gonna be the GitHub repo. Uh I'm not sure if Mikey's gonna beat me to posting a link. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just type it up. Oh, oh, power, oops. It's just GitHub PowerShell DSC. Yeah. So, so we're not taking uh, pull requests at this time, uh, simply because if we started doing that, it's going to slow down the actual development work. But we do encourage people to open up issues. Um, feel free to open up stuff on bugs, but I think more important than bugs, because we know it's buggy right now, is really like designs and features and stuff like that, right? Like if things don't make sense to you, uh, it makes more, it's better for us to hear that early so we can make adjustments versus when we have like thousands of lines of code behind it now, making changes is hard or if we have partners depend on that behavior, you know, stuff like that. So early feedback, definitely encouraged. Yep, gotcha. And for the, because you mentioned uh, some of the resources or the support for different resource uh, languages like class-based, PowerShell class-based is not there, is that right? No, no, no. I want to be clear right now with the alpha, you can use script based resources or PowerShell class based resources. What I was saying is the new export capability, which is completely new to DSC, uh, that is, doesn't support PowerShell classes. Like there's no way directly in a PowerShell class to say get set test and export. Gotcha. Understood. No. Gotcha. You. The workaround is to have a PS1 script. Uh, again, I'm not encouraging. I, we have to kind of think through whether we think this is a best practice or not. Um, but you could have a PS1 script defined in a resource manifest and uh, attach that to export, right? So like the way, if you want to play with it today and you already have a class-based resource, you can still have that for get, set, and test. How's this going to work? Let me think. And then for export, you probably have a, you'd have to have a separate resource because the way PowerShell works is it goes through a PowerShell group resource. We will eventually add it directly. Uh, Mikey, you're unmuted. Yeah. I see your mouth moving. I was just going to say it might be interesting to put together a uh, uh, PowerShell uh, resource exporter group resource uh, temporarily, and that would that would work for all the all the resources that haven't that that don't upgrade to the new model where they define export in and of themselves. Although, yeah, yeah. Well, those well, are hard to discover. Add real quick. So, so when we eventually do add export capability for PowerShell classes, we're, we're probably not going to do it for script-based resources. Um, partly because there's a, the whole moth thing is still there for script-based resources, right? And, and for class-based, the scheme, the class is a schema. 
but um, you, that will require a new PS Desire State Configuration Module version, which is going to be our new and improved V3, which replaces the old V3. Um, I have no time frame when that's going to happen. Uh, basically, with the same resources doing DC V3 also does PS DSC. So. Right, gotcha. Is there any questions on the chat? Anyone have any questions for the guys while we're on? If you do, feel free to come off mute or, or does any, can anyone see if there's anything in the chat? And by the way, um, you know, one of the, like, we have a bunch of Microsoft folks on a call here. Like, one of the things we discussed is uh, going for future uh, DC community calls, as you guys are playing with the V3 stuff, like, we can use this time also to help. If you're hitting problems, we can talk through that, you know, kind of treat it as like office hours, if you will, is a term that we use at Microsoft. Um, so we're available during this time to kind of, you know, troubleshoot challenges you're having for either configuration side, resource side, or integration side. We're still early in the call, so you could even try it out now and by the end probably have some questions. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that would be fantastic. I think that's a great idea. So yeah, we'll we'll see if we can wrangle some some uh, people who are building with it and get them to come and ask yeah. some questions about what, what they're running into. Feel the question that I see in chat. Yeah, great question. So you know, we're actively um, looking at what this integration is going to look like, and I'm hopeful that in one of the next few calls, we'll have something that we can um, share with all of you. I think that we'll also be able to use any feedback that's made to the existing repo to like help um, help you know better integrate with machine config. So, um, you know, as you are like other giving feedback on the project, you're opening an issue or a bug or anything like that, and you have something that you know, you want to be able to use specifically with machine config too. Um, now's a really great time to uh, bring that up as well, even if it's just something that, you know, you don't like the way that it works today in machine config and you want to see it be better, um, you know, reflected or represented in DSC v3. Now's like a great time to um, bring that up. I guess that's a long way to say that we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, nothing to announce yet. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, anything, Steve, Steve and Mikey, anything else you'd you'd like to add there? Otherwise, should we go over to Jody and, and get some updates from Unix tools? Uh, I guess the only thing I'll add is I am trying to target a Alpha three probably towards the end of this month. Um, the main new thing that's coming out that I'm actually kind of uh, interested in having people try. Uh, so the way it works today with command based resources is that DSC executable is going to pass JSON to the command and then it's going to do its work and then it's going to output um, JSON, right? So one of the things that we've been hypothesizing is maybe we can make it even easier for people to participate um, in certain languages where we could actually parse the incoming JSON and this will be limited. There are some limits to this. Um, you won't be able to have nested objects, but if you have like a flat format like name value pairs, we could actually pass those as environmental variables to the resource. So they don't have to worry about parsing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you still have to emit JSON, but that's really just a string, right? So you can just format it. You don't need to have a JSON parser for that. Um, so that'd be kind of interesting to see if people can build some resources around that, kind of make things go a little bit faster for like, uh, especially for non-Windows scenarios, like writing them in Bash or something like that. Cool, cool. So. All right, well, let's, let's go over to Jody. Hey, Danielle, awesome. So thanks, I was just responding to a couple Hi, of things in the thread. Um, and I am also just throwing out a quick welcome to Matemwa, who's driving the feature that Raymond put in the chat too. So I think this is actually Matemwa's first community call too. So you folks might see him around a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I guess, only things that we kind of wanted to cover on our side was I think that, oh, hey, which I'm so you came off camera. You can provide a quick intro if you want to. Hi, everyone. My name is Mutemwa. Um, I recently just joined the team. I'm excited to be here. Um, it's always nice working with uh, all the Michaels that we have um, <laughs> and Jody and Steve. So 
excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Adama. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, so I think the main updates that are going to be most helpful for this audience are we have, I think, since our last community call, at least two versions of NX tools that have been published to the PowerShell gallery, um, mainly focusing on getting out NX script, um, as well as some quality improvements to NX package, as well as um, finalizing some of the behavior around NX service. Um, so I think what I would say is make sure you're running the latest version of the module uh, as available in the PowerShell gallery um, and take a look at our most recent PR around NX service if that's something that you're interested in. I think we're one task away from getting that um, PR merged in the repo. And, um, you know, if you have any other feedback on resources you'd like to see or behaviors that are not working as expected, um, you know, as always a great time to uh, file those directly in the repo. Um, yeah, so main updates on our side, but also happy to answer any questions or issues that people have been running into. Um, yeah, so we can kind of make this a general discussion if there's anything top of mind for, for anyone on DSC or machine config. Anyone tried tried the um, Init latest updates to the Init tools and wants some wants some help? They can post straight in here and. See Michael's on uh, joined as well on, on the chat. Any updates on on your from your side, Michael? Yeah, I was going to make sure everybody knows. I'll put the chat uh, the, the link in the chat. Uh, never mind the date in the link itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. To go by the date in the actual blog post, uh, but the original DSC version one for Linux, which is GitHub.com. I think it's Microsoft DSC for Linux. We have to double check on that. Uh, we announced a year ago that we were planning to end support at the end of this month. That doesn't impact the Windows DSC extension, and it does not impact Windows servers in Azure Automation DSC. Uh, it only impacts the DSC extension for Linux VMs, uh, which we never introduced for Arc. Uh, and support for DSC for Linux in the Azure Automation service. Um, so anybody who uh, still has a requirement for this, please reach out to me um, and either we'll work with you to um, make sure that you know your requirements are met by the machine configuration service. Uh, that, that's, for example, why we brought the XScript resource forward to NX tools to make it easier to migrate. Um, or if you feel like you're hung up for any other reason, please just let me know. And just to be clear, uh, it, there's no technical impl impact to either of these. So technically, if you uh, want to register a machine into Azure Automation or use the, the latest version of the DSC extension, there's nothing that will prevent you from doing it. This is just about the support statement um, and helping everybody move to uh, machine configuration, and then clearly eventually to DSCB3 when we get there. Um, if anybody used the old Linux DSC, uh, you already know it was very feature limited compared to what's available for Windows. Uh, it was, you know, most of the resources were written in C, not even C plus or C sharp, but the actual old C uh, language. And so for that reason, most people used X scripts and wrapped Python. Um, so anyway, I don't know if I'm reaching the audience or not, but uh, I just wanted to reach out to as many people as possible um, to make sure that uh, number one, everybody has heard, and number two, if we need to make any adjustments either technically or in dates, uh, that we are making sure we're doing our best to keep people happy. So that's it. Thanks for the time. Awesome to know. Thanks, Mike. That's that's fantastic. No, um, have you dropped a link in the in the chat for for that post? Yeah, the blog post is there. Let me also get the GitHub repo. Um, do you do you have much visibility on yes. how w widely used that was? It I. Uh, do and I can tell you that uh, from what I can tell, it's not widely used. Um, but 
you never know. <laughs> People yeah. could be using it offline. Uh, there's there's a bunch of scenarios, so I I try to not make assumptions. It's uh, I'll just say that it's old enough. It's well before telemetry evolved <laughs> to, to being uh, <laughs> informative to helping with these kinds of decisions. So understood. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, any any other updates on your side, Michael? Side of no, I don't think so. I would just echo what Steve was saying. We're we're very much looking for people to submit issues for DSCB three. Um, it's uh, it's a it's a, obviously something we're super passionate about, and we think um, we're adding the right features that people have been asking for for quite some time. So we're pretty excited about that. Well, it sounds like it'd be a great idea to to use this some of this time as as an office hours and help the community come in and you know share what they've been working on but also share any challenges that they might have does that sound like a you know is any any objections yeah. to doing that or does it sound like a fair fair use of this time sounds awesome to me but hey yeah sounds great to me as well Awesome. Well, what we'll do is I'll I'll chat with Gail um, and and Johan, and we'll we'll maybe make an update to and and do some sort of a sort of an announcement or uh, on Discord Slack, and say this is what we're thinking. Bring your bring your challenges along. Bring your what you're working on. Share that with the team so that we can get this get the support you the new DSC V3 uh, to get that out the door with you guys. That'd be fantastic. Well, anyone else got anything they'd like to like to share? Any questions for the team? Comments, asks? Otherwise, it sounds like everyone wants some time back. Cool. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming along. Thanks. Thanks to the DSV team and all the, all the various teams for coming on and sharing the, sharing the time. Um, Jody, if you wouldn't mind stopping the recording, I'll ping you offline and, and get you get the get the recording to upload. Um, it's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for all for sharing.